Hello viewers, today I'm going to show you quickly one more BMW E61 with M57 with a broken dynamic chain. This is going to be just a quick video, what's going to be all the favor points and parts uh, when this happens. So this is the car which I'm working on and this is at what stage we are, as we can see. The cylinder block is prepared for installation of the cylinder head with the rebuilded cylinder head. So yeah, we are at this point, we have removed pretty much everything uh, on the front, uh, everything involving removing the timing chains. Because funny enough, we were talking uh, with the owner that he wants to change the timing chains on this car and he was here in the shop because of a automatic gearbox service. But after he took the car from the shop, he called me after, I don't know, maybe an hour or some, something like that. And uh, he told me that the car doesn't want to start up. And I was kind of, why well, this is going to happen? The automatic gearbox will not prevent the engine from start up. And I told him to bring the car back to me and to see what's happening. And after that, I saw that the car is uh, triggering some fault codes about the camshaft sensor. And most of the time when this happens, uh, you start to be suspicious about the timing chains and in the end of the day it turns out that let me show you so this is the old timing components the the tensioner the guides and the three chains and uh, of course this is the timing chain for the crankshaft which rarely fails but the one which fails all the time is this one as we can see this is the camshaft chain between the camshaft and the high pressure fuel pump 90 percent of the time this is the issue with these chains this one fails and leave you stranded so this is why right now the cylinder head is removed if we can believe on the odometer of the car right right now this car is at 230 something thousand kilometers which is not a lot but still actually the engine looks pretty good inside it's pretty clean and uh, probably have seen good service intervals but still this happened and that's why i always recommend this to be done the timing chain service to be done on 200,000 kilometers just to be on the safe side so now what is going to be more involved than timing chain itself so we have several rocker arms failure all of these are broken down because when the timing chain fails the valve is hitting the rocker arm the, the hydraulic lifter and after that it's hitting the rocker arm against the lop of the camshaft and uh, they broke down like that so i believe somewhere around 10 of them should be changed uh, we found out for 40 hydraulic lifters and see yeah, this is uh, about these components right now the cylinder head is machined and everything is done this is the cylinder head as we can see, resurfaced, rechecked, all the valves have been checked and uh, we, we had only four valves bended. Yeah, you cannot see it like that, but four of them are bent and changed. Uh, I can see this one is changed, which this two I believe and which one it was sent uh, here. So pff, most of the time they are more than this, but uh, yeah, the other thing which we needed to do, like probably most of the time when you're doing job like this on these cylinder heads and most of the bmw engines the exhaust valve guides needed to be changed the 12 of them most of the time on bmw engines the exhaust valve guides fails much more faster than the intake ones and the other thing which of course happened is the camshafts so the camshafts of course were bended because these camshafts are hollow because these camshafts are hollow and they were bended of course i believe the intake one was around 0.3 millimeter of curvature and the exhaust one was 0.4 millimeters see yeah, they they managed to straighten them up and uh, we can reuse them this is not the first time we are doing this so they going to run for sure see yeah, if you need to find a new set of camshafts by new i mean second hand in good condition is really hard because this really often happens and most of them are curved so yeah this is the other thing which is going to increase the price when the timing chain fails the valves the rocker arms the the camshafts and of course uh, the resurfacing job we had one stuck wall plug which needed to be dr drilled out probably about the price probably is going to increase the price with around at least one or 1.2 
thousand euro more than only time exchange job kind of hard to calculate it right now but it really depends how much valves have failed how much rocker arms have failed and yeah this is it about the gaskets you're going to need extra gasket for the for the exhaust manifold the bolts actually for these engines are kind of expensive like the head gasket the head gasket is also also really expensive and uh, the owner decided to go with some oem parts and uh, high quality aftermarket ones here are all the parts we're going to use this is the l ring head gasket this is the three dotted the thickest head gasket you can use uh, he was with two dotted uh, this is with 0.1 millimeter thicker than the two dotted head gasket and this is all the parts involving a lot of original o-rings this is some timing components this is the timing chains like uh, once again oem ones this is the serpentine belts the usual flange which is failing all the time on this engine uh, this is probably the rocker arms this is the nuts for the injectors this is the guides gaskets and uh, pretty much everything involving the timing chain job we had uh, some go fox uh, and yet this is pre pretty much it so we're going to assemble everything and we're going to show you in the end how it sounds because I have a already a really detailed video about this procedure uh, you can see it in my channel I just want to show you one more car which has this failure because a lot of people are telling me that this cannot happen but this is not the first and not the last time this is going to happen yes something also really important when the valves hit the lobes of the camshafts most of the time these bolts not most of the time every time these bolts which are holding the bearing caps of the camshafts are going to be extended and you're going to start removing the camshafts and they're going to be loose this is why you're going to need to replace all the bolts of the camshafts and this is a must 100 because if you reuse the old bolts you're going to have an issues for sure after that that is why you need to buy these bolts only oem brand new ones actually it's preferable to change these bolts even when you don't have this issue uh, when you just undo them you're going to need to change them but uh, in our case it's uh, needed for sure because all the bolts were totally failed so when this happens be sure that you have bought a new bolt for the camshafts Okay, so the new timing chains are installed, just wanted to show We have installed the O-pump, the O-suction pipe, of course we have changed the O-ring here between the O-pump and the O-suction pipe and uh, all the OEM parts installed, the gasket, um, the chains, the guides, the tensioner and the bot Actually we're going to change the three gears on the crankshaft, on the high pressure fuel pump and on the camshaft but before that, before let, letting up the tension on the camshaft chain we're going to need to install a timing chain car because after that you are not going to have access to one of the bolts but I have a lot of videos about this Let me just show you on the top uh, because the cylinder head is already installed how it looks like As I told you the cylinder head with the bolt camshafts installed, brand new bolts we have cleaned as good as possible all the parts which are included in the cylinder head we have changed some of the rocker arms some of the hydraulic lifters right now the engine is locked up this means uh, the camshafts are timed and yeah i have locked up the crankshaft so the only thing that's left is to install the timing chain cover and to connect the upper camshaft chain once again we're not doing this because let me show you if we move up, move up this guides we're going to see that underneath underneath we have a bolt here which if we install the chain on the camshaft gear we are not going to have access to this bolt back here so that's why you're going to need to first install the timing chain cover and after that the upper chain but pretty much this is it this is the final steps of installing all the chains and after that we're going to reinstall all the rest things the rocker cover, the open and so on okay so after a little bit of assembling as you can see everything important wise is pretty much assembled as usual I have forgot to record the first startup but I'm going to show you how it sounds so let me start up the car and especially because many of you are going to want to see the instrument cluster Odometer. So 
Oh yeah, it's going to be kind of hard. I don't have enough space to get in the car. Let me figure out something. Okay, I managed to start up the car. And just to show you right now, the car is at 232,000 kilometers. Yeah, right now it's missing the rear bumper, so we have some parking quite. Uh, let me show you. It's down. Good in my opinion. In my humble opinion. I don't, I don't hear any parasitic sounds or anything like this. Everything seems fine. And here pretty much the only thing that it left is to install all the decorational plastics, the cabin filters plus the dust chutes underneath the engine. I'm going to do this and going to show you the final footage of everything, but pretty much I believe this engine is cured and is going to last a really long period of time uh, with the new OEM timing chains and all the head job which we have done. Okay, so on the next day, on the morning, with everything assembled, all the plastics, as we can see, all the fancy plastics installed with the cabin filters. So, let me start up the car for you guys. This is going to be the first start of the morning. So, it's kind of cold, I guess. But still, I believe it's going to start fast because I didn't have any fault code for GoPox. So, let's give it a try. Okay, pretty fast start. Uh, seems pretty smooth for a cold start. Uh, actually, we haven't checked the injectors. So let me show you on the front. So this is it. It sounds smooth. I have checked the engine oil and the coolant. Everything is top top. So the car is pretty much ready to be taken. Let's see, do we have any smoke? Yeah, we are missing the DPF, so that's why it sounds like this. Oh yeah, it sounds pretty smooth. I believe there will be no issues from now on. And yeah, the owner has some sport suspension. I believe it was jump. Yeah, this is going to be. So let me turn it off once again. I have test drive the car and everything seems fine. So, okay, guys, this is going to be about this for this kind of known issue on these engines. Uh, everything seems fine, so yeah, I'm going to end up the video here. Uh, for those of you that are going to ask me a thousand times, you're going to need to do this the timing change up on every 200,000. Don't don't ask me this 100 times. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.